Hi, my name's Ian and I'm out on a bike ride today making a video for my students. And the topic is digital signal processing for engineering. And that's actually got a lot of applied maths in it and it's really good to have practical examples. So that's what I like to do on my videos. So I make short videos that are punchy and on a very specific topic and uh, really focuses the mind and really ignites the curiosity of the student. That's what I really like to have in my teaching is igniting the curiosity of students. So I take what I call a solutions-based approach to teaching. And I really like to focus on giving students tools that they can use in the future challenges that they have in their uh, employment and in life in general. And I think you can see if you add a bit of personal touch to the video, then it really helps the students to uh, grasp the topic, engage with you, and it's quite fun for yourself as well, getting up, uh, visiting beaches like this, and really enjoying uh, the process of teaching. So I thought I might take you behind the scenes a little, uh, show you some of my thinking in making my videos, and show you the process of doing it, uh, what's involved. A lot of my videos are just paper and pens, not out on uh, my bike. And so I really want to show what the key ideas are there and uh, how I've made a success of my videos. The students really like it. So let's go behind the scenes and take a look. So one of the keys to my solution-based approach to learning is to spark students' curiosity and give them time to think about those things. And that's not typically conducive to a lecture format, a long form lecture. So I like to make short videos that focus on three main questions. They're either a what question, a how question, or a why question. And I like to start with what, because that is really about the curiosity. What is this thing the students heard of? And I like, again, to focus on the tools that they have. So I like them to know what those tools are. And if you can present it in a short, punchy form and you can give them a chance to rewind a video and watch it again, uh, then I really find that an effective way to get them thinking about a new topic and understanding what it is. So the second type of video is the how. How does it relate to what they already know? And that's absolutely critical. So I really, I make a lot of videos called how, to, how does this relate to that, for example. Uh, and I find that those videos the students really engage with and to understand how the new information fits in with what they already know. So the third type of video is the why video and that's really where you tie the tool in with the practice of where it's going to be solving problems and this is really the solution based approach to learning. And so they've got the tool, they understand the tool, they're curious about it, they're curious to know how to use it and then you can give lots of examples of why they need to know about it, where the applications are and why it was a good tool to use in that case. As I said, the videos are short and punchy. I tend to try to make them between, be between six minutes and 12 minutes. Some of them are longer than that and it's often the case that a topic does require it to be longer, but even then, I really try to think to myself, do I need that extra time? And I'm often editing my videos and cutting out bits of extra explanation and so on to get the video down to be really as short as I possibly can. So let's go and take a look at how I do this in the three main types of videos that I make. Pen and paper with me talking is the main type of video. Uh, real life videos with me in the frame, like this one, and videos where I use computer programs and graphics in the background from a screen. And here's the setup that I started with four years ago. It's pretty basic. There's just a phone suspended above a piece of paper by a coat hanger. And I found that this was a way to have the phone absolutely horizontal. And this really points out that the most important factor is the topic and the message and really trying to spark that curiosity in the student, really at a personal level. So one advantage you get is that you can make videos like this where you can see my hands and I'm drawing things on the page with a real pen and it really I'm trying to give the impression and the feeling that you're sitting next to me so that the student is sitting right next to me and getting personal tutoring, personal uh, attention uh, and answering questions in a way that you would if you really were sitting next to somebody. And I really find that to be highly effective.
And here's the setup that I use now where I've got higher production qualities. I have much more attention to the lighting uh, and also I use a proper microphone. Um, I still have the same basic arrangement for the mobile phone being above the paper. Uh, I find that there is no actual substitute to having a totally horizontal phone which really can focus on that paper. Um, and of course I have a notebook uh, which I use to carefully prepare what I'm going to say and then I can refer to that while I'm actually recording the uh, videos. And another thing you'll notice from my videos is that I always keep all explanations to within half of an A4 page. I consider that if you can't explain something within half an A4 page, then it's too long and too complicated and needs to be broken up. Again, the focus is on short, bite-sized, focused topics. And more recently, I've been making videos such as this one where I'm in front of the camera explaining topics using real-world examples. Of course, all of this takes preparation. And the more involved and the more advanced and the higher production values that you aim for, uh, the more preparation is required. And that's something that I do put quite a bit of time into. Also, of course, post-production. Editing these videos together uh, does take time. It's not too hard to learn how to do, but it is definitely something that I believe educators today should be uh, learning these skills and employing these skills. And it is possible to make videos that really are engaging for students, uh, really focused, and really do enhance the learning of key topics. So thank you for your interest in my approach to learning, a solution-based approach to teaching engineering. And of course, feel free to check out my YouTube channel and the webpage where there's a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.